Well, let's move on now to the war in Ukraine. Russia's pledge to scale back its military activity around the capital, Kyiv, appears to have made a little difference so far. Local officials say both Kyiv and another city in northern Ukraine were both subjected to heavy bombardments overnight, just hours after that promise had been made. In the words of Ukraine's Prime Minister Volodymyr Zelensky, Moscow's words don't silence the explosions of Russian shells. From Kyiv, our global security editor, Rohit Khatri. The outskirts of Kyiv this morning. We are here to test Russia's claim that they're pulling back. And there we are again. You know, there is absolutely no evidence here that what the Russians promised yesterday is actually happening on the ground. In fact, if anything, over the last 24 hours or so, the soldiers here are saying is that the shelling has intensified. A soldier shows us one of the anti-tank missiles provided by Britain. He tells us they need more. His commander doesn't want his face to be seen, but says Russians are using civilians in the suburbs nearby as human shields. This afternoon, the Ukrainian president addressed the Norwegian parliament. Appealing for more support, he said no one should believe what Russia says about its intentions. The war is going on. Russia is deploying new forces on our terrain to try to continue destroying us, destroying Ukrainians. We have to do more to stop this war. And first and outmost is weapons. The freedom should be armed, not worse than the tyranny. As its invasion continued, the Russian foreign minister was in China, calling for what he called a just democratic world order. We regard yesterday's talks in Istanbul as positive progress, but not as the final result yet. Video posted online today shows destruction in the suburb of Erpin. It's here that evacuees have told ITV News that Russian troops tortured, raped and killed civilians. There is no sign of them in the streets. But tonight, as artillery fire was heard in the capital, Ukrainian officials said Russia's plan now is for a new offensive. Rohit Katru, ITV News, Kyiv. Well, here the government's come under fire from campaigners over what they call the woeful number of visas so far granted to Ukrainian people fleeing the war. 28,000 have applied for a visa under the Homes for Ukraine scheme, which allows people here to host refugees. But so far, fewer than 3,000 visas have actually been issued. There have been 31,000 applications under the Ukraine Family Scheme for those who have family already in the UK. And from those, nearly 23,000 visas have been granted. In total, nearly 60% of applicants are still waiting for a response. In all, the UN estimates more than 4 million people have fled Ukraine since Russia's troops invaded. From Poland, our correspondent Rupert Evelyn has the latest. On the border, the refugees keep arriving. And weeks after the war started, Britain is still keeping them waiting. The visa system isn't working and those here trying to help are losing patience. It needs to be streamlined, it needs to be faster. It just needs to happen now. And right now, uh, we, we, we've not got one application through. And we're, we're deflated and we just need the government to just step in and to really get this, this sorted out. Up to 70 people are waiting. They were told it should take three to five days to fix paperwork, but three weeks is more accurate. Tonya and Victoria have homes to go to in Manchester, but have no idea when they'll get there. There are no cities in my country where we would feel safe. Um, we were paired up with someone in England who is prepared to host us, and we are going to Manchester. And do you know when you're going to go to Manchester? 
it could be two weeks, three weeks. There has been a lot of confusion. At the start of the conflict, we filmed the stuttering British response to refugees in Poland. Many, especially those waiting to house Ukrainians, are wondering what's changed. It's um, shambolic and I think it's very sad. I mean, I think the government is exploiting the generosity of the decent, ordinary people of whom I understand 200,000 have opened their homes, in most cases to complete strangers. It's said here that other countries are laughing at Britain's system, which aid workers say is embarrassing. For these refugees, this border crossing represents the end of one journey, fleeing Ukraine and finding safety here. It's also the start of another, looking for a new life in a new country. And when it comes to making choices, Britain appears to be the most difficult option. The Home Office accepts it's been difficult in part, they say, because it's a new scheme and they want to ensure people are protected and not put at risk. They say Ukrainians are getting visas, have started to arrive in the UK and they've made the process quicker. But here in Poland, it doesn't feel that way. And in this town, dozens are still waiting. Rupert Evelyn, ITV News, Poland.